Hello friends, this video on neat dual nature of radiation and matter is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us do a quick recap of de Broglie hypothesis. So we have learned that as per de Broglie hypothesis, a particle of mass m moving with velocity b, v behave like a wave under suitable conditions. So even if the particle is like any particle, it is a substance, it is a ball or anything which is of mass m which is moving with velocity v, we can say that it would behave like a wave under certain conditions. And how do we relate the wave nature with the particle nature? We say that the wavelength of this wave would be lambda which would be given by h by p. So what is p? p is the linear momentum which is given by the product of mass and velocity. So this is de Broglie's hypothesis. So any object of mass m moving with velocity v behaves like a wave with wavelength lambda given by h by mv under suitable conditions. And this associated wave is called the matter wave. So th this frequency, this uh, wavelength lambda is of the matter wave. De Broglie wavelength of matter wave is given by h is equal to h by p. So here h is the Planck's constant which is given by 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34 joules second. Now based on de Broglie hypothesis, let us quickly have a look at some of the questions. Question number 1. Electrons of mass m with de Broglie wavelength lambda fall on the target in an x-ray tube. The cutoff wavelength lambda naught of the emitted x-ray is so here what do we mean by the cutoff wavelength so the cutoff wavelength is the is, a, is just another term for threshold wavelength okay so now first of all we need to find out the kinetic energy of these electrons so let's do that so kinetic energy of the electrons would be equal to half mv square so this can also be written as half mv whole square divided by m so this can be written as half p square by m where p is the linear momentum so p is the product of mass and velocity now from de Broglie's concept or de Broglie hypothesis we know that lambda is equal to h by p or we can say p is equal to h by lambda so now we can write kinetic energy in terms of lambda that is it is equal to half h square divided by lambda square m so this is our equation one so this is the kinetic energy of the electrons in terms of the wavelength of the radiation right so now let us talk about the energy of the photon of the emitted x-ray so what would be the energy of the photon of the emitted x-ray so that would be equal to hc divided by lambda naught from the concept of a photoelectric emission so we can say this right that energy of a photon is h nu where nu can be written as c by lambda correct so this would be hc by lambda naught so now for cutoff wavelength so the concept of cutoff wavelength is that it is that wavelength for which the value of wavelength for which the photoelectric emission just starts so that means hc by lambda naught should be equal to 1 by 2 h square by lambda square m so basically equation 1 and equation 2 should be equal that means exactly the energy of the photo electron should be exactly equal to the energy of the photon of the emitted x-ray so now if you solve this you see that lambda naught is equal to 2 lambda square m c divided by h so the correct option is a Question number 2. An electron of mass m and a photon have same energy E. Okay. The ratio of de Broglie wavelengths associated with them is. Okay. So let us first talk about the electron. So if you talk about the electron, so the wavelength associated with the electron will be given by h by mv because mv is nothing but linear momentum. So this can be written as h by p which in turn can be written as h divided by root over 2 me because we are trying to write it in terms of energy because we want to associate wavelength with energy. So why did, how could we write it like this because energy is equal to half mv square which can be written as half 
m square v square divided by m so this is equal to half p square by m so we can say p square is equal to 2 m e so this is how momentum and energy are related to each other so this is the relationship for electron now what about the photon so when you talk about the photon the energy of a photon is h nu which can be written as h c by lambda of the photon right so now we have to find out the ratio of wavelength of electron to wavelength of photon. Now from this we see that lambda photon will be equal to hc by e. Correct? So therefore lambda electron by lambda photon will be equal to h by root over 2 me. This divided by hc by e. Now here in the problem it is given that both of them have same energy E. That is why it is E in both the cases. So this would be equal to H divided by root over 2 M E into E by H C. So H H will get cancelled. So this is equal to 1 by C root over E by 2 M. So the correct option is D. Question number 3. If the kinetic energy of the particle is increased to 16 times its previous value, the percentage change in the de Broglie wavelength of the particle is. So here we have to talk about the relationship between an kinetic energy and de Broglie wavelength. So again from de Broglie hypothesis, lambda is equal to h by p. Momentum can be written in terms of energy like this, root over 2 me. So therefore, we can say that lambda is proportional to 1 by root over e because h and m would remain because all other things are assumed to be the same because for the same particle only we are just increasing the energy to see by how much how many times the de Broglie wavelength changes so basically h m and 2 all of these are constants so we can say that lambda is proportional to 1 by root over e Therefore, we can say lambda 1 by lambda 2, where lambda 1 is the wavelength in the, of the particle initially and lambda 2 is the wavelength later. Right? So, lambda 1 by lambda 2 would be equal to root over E2 by root over E1. Correct? So, the question says that the kinetic energy of the particle is increased to 16 times. So, that means E2 is equal to 16 times E1. Correct? So this is this would be root over 16 E1 divided by root over E1. Now root over 16 would be how much? This would be 4. So we can say that lambda 1 by lambda 2 is equal to 4. Now we have to find out the percentage change in the de Broglie wavelength. So let us say that let lambda 1 is equal to x. In that case lambda 2 would be equal to how much? It would be x by 4 because lambda 1 by lambda 2 is equal to 4. Correct? So now if you want to calculate the percentage change that will be equal to lambda 1 minus lambda 2 divided by lambda 1 into 100%. Because change is always the difference between the initial and the final value. So initial value was lambda 1 and final value that is the later value was lambda 2. So the change with respect to the initial value so that is why divided by lambda 1 so this will be equal to x minus x by 4 divided by x into 100 so this would be equal to 3x by 4 x into 100 so this is equal to 75 percent which is option b question number 4 what should be the velocity of an electron so that its momentum becomes equal to that of a proton of wavelength 5200 5, angstrom. So here we have two different particles, protons and uh, an electron and a photon. And all we know that the momentum of the electron is equal to the momentum of the photon. Right? So how do we calculate the so first let us calculate it in terms of both of these particles right so first let us talk about the photons so lambda for photon that is the wavelength for the photon will be given by h by momentum of the photon so you can say that momentum of the photon will be equal to h by lambda photon right now so this is about photon now what is happening to the electron 
Now for electron, we know that momentum of electron is equal to mass of electron into velocity of electron. As per the question, momentum of the photon is equal to the momentum of the electron. So therefore h by lambda p is equal to me into ve. So we have to calculate the velocity of the electron. Right? So we can say that velocity of electron is equal to h by lambda p into mass of electron. So h is 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34 divided by lambda of photon that is the wavelength of the photon is 5200 angstrom which is 5200 into 10 to the power minus 10 meters. And what, how much is the mass of the electron? It is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kgs. So this value comes out to be 1400 meters per second. So that is option C. Question number 5. The momentum of a photon of energy 1 mega electron volt in kg meter per second will be Okay, so here the energy of the photon is given as 1 mega electron volt. So let us convert it into joules. So 1 mega electron volt is basically 1 into 10 to the power 6 electron volts because 1 mega is always 10 to the power 6. Now when you want to convert it into joules, you multiply it further with 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. This comes out to be 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 13 joules. So this much is the energy of the photon. Now we know that energy of a photon is given as h nu which is given as hc by lambda. Right? Now from de Broglie hypothesis we know that lambda is equal to h by p. So we can write it as hc divided by h by p. So this h and h will get cancelled. So this is equal to pc. So energy is equal to product of momentum into the speed of light. So therefore p is equal to e divided by c. So value of energy is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 13 joules divided by c is 3 into 10 to the power 8. So now when you calculate it you get 0 0.53 into 10 to the power minus 21 or 5.3 into 10 to the power minus 22 kg meter per second. So this would be the value of momentum of the photon. So option D is the correct one. Question number 6. A proton and an electron are accelerated by the same potential difference. Let lambda E and lambda P denote the deep Broglie wavelengths of electron and the proton respectively. So we have to find out the relationship between the wavelength of the electron and the proton. Okay, so let us first talk about the electron. So for the electron, lambda will be equal to h by p as per de Broglie hypothesis. Now we have already found out the relation between linear momentum and energy. So momentum is equal to root over 2me, correct? So this can be further written as h divided by root over 2m e into v0. Why? Because from photoelectric equation we know that e v0 where v0 is the stopping potential is equal to the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. So instead of e you can write e v0. Right? Now let us talk about the proton. So how about the proton? For it lambda p will be equal to h divided by root over 2 m e into v0. Correct. So basically looking at these expressions, we can say that lambda is proportional to 1 by root over m. So in this case, it would be mass of electron. In this case, it would be mass of proton. Now we know that mass of proton is greater than the mass of electron. Therefore, the lambda for proton would be less than the lambda for electron. So third ops, so which is which would be the correct option? So the correct option is C. Lambda E will be greater than lambda P. So you see based on the question, so in, in this entire lesson, the main focus is to find out from the question, you have to find out the expression to relate which two quantities. For example, you here you had to relate the wavelength with the mass, right? So that is the relation which you were looking for. 
So I think uh, with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson on dual nature of radiation and matter and I hope that you would have found this series of MCQs helpful. So the two important topics of this lesson are photoelectric effect and de Broglie hypothesis. You can expect uh, a few questions from these topics so if you have gone through all these uh, multiple choice questions i am sure that now you will be able to solve most of the questions which are given in your question banks or uh, in, in any other textbook so just try to solve as many questions as you can if you still have any doubts you can always ask them in the ask question section of examfear.com i hope that you would have found this lesson helpful see you all in the next lesson Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.